Well, hello and welcome to EDU. Today I'm going to show you a video that um, is basically a, um, a murder mystery style documentary <laughs> type of video. Uh, I made it for one of my doctoral classes and uh, I, I, I was trying to shoot this video from long distance, basically utilizing um, uh, Skype and then I tried to uh, utilize uh, another program. I think it was GoToMeeting or something like that. And I was running into issues. And um, as it turned out, the video was almost totally unusable. And so we recorded, it, it's based on an interview. Uh, so basically I, I shot the interview twice. And in one version, the video was all screwy and looked like somebody was dropping uh, acid or something. I mean, it was just so hallucinogenic. And then the other one um, had good video, some good video, and almost no audio whatsoever. So I had to piece these two together in sort of a montage type video um, and try and make it work. Okay. So this this is a good example of how you can do that if you get creative, but you have to make uh, what you're doing look intentional. So what I did was. I started off with an introduction that looks like this investigative reporter style documentary show. Uh, you've seen these shows, I'm sure, on cable. Uh, so that was my intention, uh, or at least the intention I was trying to present is sort of like a spoof type of thing. And uh, of course, uh, the exit, you know, the the exit of the video does the same thing. But you'll see. At the uh, beginning, you know, the main character comes, the interviewer, the investigator comes out and he's acting like an investigator and he's talking about what he's doing. And then there's this music and video, um, actually slideshow type montage with credits and everything. And it's really uh, upbeat and, you know, really serious, uh, kind of like a police show opening. Um, and then it ends with something similar to that. And the thing is that because I had lousy video and audio, I had to create something out of it that looked like I meant to do that, you know, sort of like when you see, uh, if you ever see a cat fall, uh, and it gets up like, like George Carlin used to say, I meant to do that. And then he walks away like he's all cool. Um, that's kind of what I was trying to do with this video. And depending on what you're doing as a beginner, um, you can do that sort of thing too. And that way I was able to utilize this horrible, video and audio and make something usable out of it. Um, so I'm going to stop talking. I'll let you watch the video and see what you can get from it. Try not to fall asleep. Okay. <laughs> but, um, um, I'll, 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 I'll talk to you after the video. Welcome to Profiles in ITDE. I'm your host, Eric DeReese. Today's subject, Ron Offit, Director of Training at Craig Technologies. Let's get started. I was able to reach Ron in his private chambers. We were able to hold a video conference on a very poor signal, but we made the best of what we had. I, I got into the industry. I have a uh, a large back, background in training uh, in, in the Army and what it takes to execute uh, complex training and training events, uh, resource requirements, and then making sure that uh, everybody was learned or, or learned something or was trained to achieve uh, specific learning objectives, uh, which carried itself over into uh, the start of my career, which is was a, a a project manager at the Armor School at Fort Knox, Kentucky, where we taught uh, or developed programs for the Armor Captain's Career Course, which is a postgraduate level hybrid solution uh, that had uh, all of the buzzwords in terms of virtual environments and instructor in the loop and avatars and that kind of thing. What kinds of qualifications would you be able to tell somebody that you have for that, you know, that qualify you for the position that you have? Well, I would say I have 
um, um, the full spectrum of experience what it takes to uh, design, develop, well, to plan, analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate. Uh, Addy, it, it, it just depends on your opportunities. Okay. And could you describe um, what your typical duties are in, in the position that you have today? I mean, what's, what do you look for? What do you expect three, on a typical day? Three, three different areas. Uh, administrivia, uh, you're required to be the one that checks the time cards of uh, all of your employees. You do the performance appraisals, approved leave. Uh, you make sure that all the work authorizations are correct. Uh, and then uh, uh, you monitor and make sure that they're in compliance with uh, all of your company's uh, programs and policies. The second uh, general area would be uh, being that interface between your project and program managers and the client and the government. And this, in most cases, uh, making sure that uh, uh, if issues are there, that you, you are able to step in at the right time and, and try and uh, keep the ship out of the rocks, so to speak. Mm. Uh, you're also uh, in the position to... Uh, make recommendations to the government that, you know, I know what you're trying to do, but it might be more cost effective and efficient if you did consider doing something else like this. Uh, because of all of these reasons, uh, it would be much easier on you uh, and the government to get to get to that. And then the third one is, is uh, doing the uh, development of the other members mm -hmm. of the team, making sure that they have opportunities to progress uh, so that they can be in a position to transition from junior to mid-level to senior ISDs uh, and project managers. And ultimately, uh, they also get a, some technical training along the way, which makes them a much viable, much, much more viable uh, employee uh, in various ways uh, for the next project. Okay. Now, you're in a position that is just below the boss um, I mean, you're in a very high position. Um, I believe you're a director, basically. Is that right? That is correct. Yes, I'm a director. Okay. okay. So um, that's a very high high level. What kinds of aspirations do you have at this point in your career? Well, what, what I'd like to be able to do is, is to uh, find that silver bullet that, that, that matches or mixes... Uh, upcoming technologies with the ability to uh, teach and train adults in a cost-effective manner uh, that keeps the interest of an adult learner. So it's, 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 it's like being a bartender and a mixologist. You got to find that right combination of all of this stuff uh, so that people will, one, pay money to get it, but it's not too much money that uh, they say, well, I love it. And I like it, but I can't afford it. Mm, okay. All right. So looking back, um, what kinds of contributions can you look at that you've made into this industry? Well, I think, you know, when I started and we had our first job there at uh, the armor school where we did the captain's armor captain's career course, we really pushed the envelope in terms of technology mm -hmm. and uh, web design uh, to enable us to uh -huh. basically develop a platform that had a lot of the same characteristics that people are looking for uh, even today uh, and, they're, and they're you know paying a lot more money for it okay so what do you find most rewarding about uh, your career well, when you when you do a good job, when you give the customer something uh, more than uh, he anticipated, uh, I think in many cases you find a technical solution for them to deliver mm -hmm. materials uh, in a manner that he did not know was there. Um, so that uh, one, he gets the right materials to the right training audience in a cost-effective manner, and he can turn around and tell his leadership that. Uh, uh, not only did I do it, I did it well, and this is the team that supported me in this effort. Okay. And what do you find most challenging? Uh, I think what's what's most challenging is, is uh, mm -hmm. 
keeping the right team together uh, as people grow and, and get more skill sets obviously they 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 have other opportunities so it's 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 that constant uh that constant battle of, of of keeping people and good people on your team so that you have those efficiencies and that effectiveness when you develop training material ron we've we've talked about a lot of different things um but one one thing that i'm curious about is how well your your education uh, prepared you for the kind of career that you've had? Well, I, I think that, you know, uh, a couple of aspects. One, uh, the technical training allows me to understand uh, the nuances of uh, tools that are designed to help you do something in their limitations. Um, especially when it comes to uh, managing client expectations of what something will or will not do. Um, I have uh, a master's degree in management information systems, so that helps a lot with project and program management because you learn how to um, mm -hmm. get the piece of information that is relevant and vital to wherever the project or program is going. Uh -huh. Um, I have another master's degree in uh, military arts and sciences, but that's 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 more like uh, analysis and thinking. So that 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 kind of thing is um, helps you look forward to the end state and the strategic objective, and that helps a lot in that area. So. And then I was in ORSA, mm -hmm. which is, you know, a technical technical training, uh, being able to do analysis. So you understand all the aspects of the programs in terms of uh, strategically getting to where you want to go. The obviously the assessment in terms of validation of both individual and group trials and all of that and the analysis of that data. Well. Ron, I really want to thank you for working with me on this. I'm, I'm very grateful. Oh, you saved me from the heat today. I have to go back out and go back to work now. Okay. All right. I really appreciate it, Ron. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Enjoy the heat. All right. Talk to you later. All right, man. Bye-bye. That's it for this episode of Profiles in ITDE. Until next time, I'm Eric DeRees. Wow, right? Did you make it? You stayed awake through all that? I'm impressed. Uh, thank you. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's the end of that video. Um, I did get an A on the on the assignment, fortunately. Um, but I know the only reason I got an, any uh, kind of a grade out of that was not told to just turn around, go back, and you know, in, interview somebody else who is an, an expert in instructional design and technology was because of the fact that I took what I had and pieced it together with a structure that was acceptable and uh, spoofed it uh, with this you know, investigative reporter type of thing and made it look intentional, made it look fun, and threw some interesting music that kind of went along with the theme. So if you run into a situation like that, you may have to do that. You may have to get creative, okay? Uh, but hey, uh, leave some comments in the comment section below, please. Let me know what you think of this and if you've had to do anything like this, okay? Um, also, if you enjoyed the video, please click the like button and the subscribe button, okay? All right, all right. So um, until the next video, take care.